You know it's bad when Shell Media can't even defend it. But first, I have to thank each and every one of you guys. Alpha Core, over 900,000 in total sales in five days. Still got 70 days left in this pre-order campaign. And now we're on the road to 1 million. I thank you guys so much. But today we are going to be talking about the Marvel. When it's so bad that the Shield media can't defend it, like this is a title that they usually would not do. They try to cover for it. They'd mask it in some kind of way, but that's not what they're doing here. As it's being reported by the Hollywood Reporter, box office bomb. That was the first three words: box office bomb. The Marvels opening to forty-seven million, or between forty-seven million and fifty-two million. And what they're saying is a new low for Marvel Studios. I'm going to give you my thoughts here in a bit, but let's read. Based on Friday earnings of $21.5 million, the Marvel Studios and Disney Superhero Temple, a poll, excuse me, is headed for a domestic opening of $47 million to $52 million to rank as the worst start in the history of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. The Marvels marks a new low for Kevin Feige's Marvel Studios. Here we go. It says unrivaled success and boasts the theory that superhero fatigue is a real thing as fanboys grow weary of the glut of titles and are far less forgiving. Okay. Now, this is what I will say. There's still some soft uh, <laughs> punches being thrown, pulled, if you will, with this whole superhero fatigue. I get it. There are going to be people that are saying two different things. You have one that's using superhero fatigue in a way to saying that basically the genre is the problem. And I'm going to get to that because that's most of them. Then you got others who may be saying the same thing it is that I'm saying. Well, it's really dog crap fatigue. Uh, and you're trying to just give people a bunch of slop that they don't really want. And it's backfiring. They can't just crap out billion dollar films anymore. Those days are gone and they're probably not coming back anytime soon. They don't really have anything to look forward to to try to turn this bad boy around. You got Echo. You got uh, Agatha. You got uh, uh, Captain Falcon. <laughs> uh, Black Captain America. You got some other things that, oh, I guess Ironheart. They're in trouble. Okay, they are in trouble, and this is complete mismanagement. It's cockiness and complete mismanagement, and that's why I, what I think gets lost in this whole conversation as people discuss this superhero fatigue thing. This movie, the first one, this was supposed to be originally Captain Marvel two. Keep it in that perspective, but the first one was sandwiched between cliffhanger, massive climax. It was no way that it was not going to succeed. Now we're dealing with a different set of circumstances. They've laid a bunch of duds. And I think this one is far more honest. Look, it didn't need to make a billion dollars. Well, well, to be fair, considering how much they spent, yeah, they did. But you get what it is that I'm saying. That's speaking to the mismanagement as well as far as money, the amount of money they're dumping into these projects and they're not able to get a return. If this keeps up, this movie would have had to have been the greatest thing in the world. And if that was basically the only chance that it had to make money. Where the word of mouth got around, people were like, oh, this is okay, and got to seeing it. It looks like that's not going to be happening, so this is going to be a dud on a level of Flash, it looks like. And that's going to be one of the worst performing, uh, well, they're going to lose a lot of money. Not like a couple of million. They're going to lose hundreds of millions of dollars, considering that they spent on upward of $300 million on just to produce the damn thing. These guys are in trouble. They would have had to make between like six fifty, dollars talking $800 million, to like really be okay looks like they're not going to do this at this rate but it lets them off easy when you say the fatigue bit because it blames the genre and it's not the producer it's not the fact that you can't get people enthusiastic you can't get butts in the seats you've ruined uh beloved characters you've had terrible writers that should have had no business being near this stuff you've had directors actors actresses uh, go on about how much they really despise certain uh, uh levels of, or aspects of their uh, of the audience not really liking these characters really what happened is they saw this big boom in these types of movies and yet you, you had people that wanted to take advantage of that to advance their own careers putting their own little pizzazz on stories that didn't really need it kevin feige all in along with victoria alonzo even though she's not in the picture anymore focusing on things that had nothing to do with bringing about good stories, bringing about Marvel comic books to life, 
Kevin Feige said the whole point of the Eternals was really popped this whole crap show off was because they were obscure characters that really people didn't know so they can make these literally gay changes uh, to them and, and focus on aspects of diversity and stuff that doesn't really, not doesn't really, it has nothing to do on the bearing. It doesn't bear <laughs> how good your film's going to be. It's a side effect. It always has been. I know people love to champion it like, oh, it's so great. No, it's just a thing. Whether it does lack diversity or has a whole lot of it is irrelevant. But if you push for it, you're telling people that you're not putting the best people in those positions and you're certainly not focusing on telling good stories if that is what you're highlighting. They're in trouble. Disney's in trouble. We already know that they have multiple properties that are in trouble. But when you see what people are doing with comic book stuff out of maybe spending these hundreds of millions of dollars on film, I don't think that the genre is to blame. I think everybody has uh, that to be a Disney and Marvel Studios. They all have to do with this and why they've laid duds. And now they've turned off even the normies. Die hard. You kicked them out a long time ago. You said you didn't want them. So now you're left with normies and they said, we don't want it. So what do you have? What are you left with? Jack Diddley squat. Alpha Core number one's pre-order is live. Written by the legendary Chuck Dixon and penciled by Joe Bennett. Visit Ripperverse.com to grab a copy and any of the merchandise items. Be sure to also check out the animated trailer for the campaign, which is the latest project from Ripperverse Studios. Y'all be easy.